Welcome to this episode of the Cabela's Fisherman's Handbook. On today's show, we offer fishing tips on various techniques, including flipping, pitching, and crankbaits. All of the content in this show is designed to help you catch more fish. Let's get out on the water with Wade and talk about one of his favorite ways to fish. Flipping and pitching, you know, they're basically short line applications that anglers use in and around a variety of cover. Uh, it's been, you know, related to hand-to-hand -hand combat, you know, full-on, uh, you know, fight, two heavyweights going, going at it. However you want to look at it, it is a battle uh, between you and the fish. And the battle can be as simple as trying to figure out how to get a bite, and then what to do with it afterwards, and then how to recreate that all over. And for me, flipping and pitching, uh, it's an addiction. It's been an obsession my entire life when it comes to bass fishing. It's, without question, uh, one of my top three favorite ways to go fishing for largemouth bass. Oh, he got strong at the boat. He came in pretty easy till he got to the boat. When you start looking at the techniques of, of flipping and pitching, and there are vast, there are differences in them, but for, for the sake of this uh, little piece we're doing right here, we're just gonna kinda lump them together. We're gonna talk about those presentations where you're making an underhand cast, uh, letting the bait pendulum out into your hand into a variety of cover, and the gear needed to be successful in those types of situations. And there are a lot of different factors that relate to that type of fishing to help you determine uh, the bait, the color of bait, the size of the weight, little additions you may add to it, such as punching skirts or no punching skirts, baits that are big, baits that are small, the appendages, the actions of each bait. Then you can take it down into uh, the size of line, the type of line, fluorocarbon, monofilament, braided line, the actual pound test of each one of them, as well as the rod and reel combos themselves. All of those will have a direct result in your success or failures. Now, granted, you can use anything we're gonna talk about in any fishing situation and you're gonna be successful to a certain extent. But when you match the right pieces of gear all together and that bite's going on, you can have some of the best bass fishing you're ever gonna experience. There he is. That's a good one. Little tick. Come here, buddy. Boy, these fish are fat, healthy, and look good. I've only got two different samples of soft plastics right here that would work for a flipping and pitching type of a scenario. And there's probably a thousand different ones out there that somebody could hook onto, hook onto their hook and find success with. And you know, what I've tried to do is really a lot of times in today's world is simplify uh, some of my bait presentations. You know, you look at this, this bait right here from Big Bite Baits. It's a bait that's gonna be designed, it's very compact in nature, yet it still has some great appendages on there, as I call them, to give it action uh, once it goes down into the, into the strike zone. But, but it's still compact enough when you're trying to pick apart heavy cover that it's gonna flip in there. So many times you'll see certain baits with uh, too many loose pieces on them as you're flipping into that cover with a light weight especially it will hang on the cover and deflect it and knock it offline where it's uh, not going to be able to go right into the intended location where you feel the fish is that's why a lot of these style baits uh, are so very successful in that type of a uh, flipping and pitching situation because you can punch it right in there everything's nice and compact but you've still got some great action swimming action especially when the bait uh, is coming into the water and out of the water and it's got a very uh, good profile much like a lot of your bluegill or crawfish that are going to be up in those areas so when it comes to picking your profiles it comes to picking your colors and styles of bait don't overthink it keep it very simple pick some of the most basic colors you know like your neon black red when you're in those muddy water situations green pumpkins watermelon reds your okeechobee cross some of that when you're in more clear water or lightly stained water you're going to find success Get out of the tree. Uh, finicky little guy, he hit it swimming it out of that bush. Come here, what we got you coming that way. Little fat fish there. When it comes to choosing line for this type of a flipping and pitching application, there are a lot of different uh, 
choices that are going to be available out there to you. A couple things that I like to keep in mind and that, that keep it simple motto uh, when I go fishing is let's just say um, I've got semi-clear water with a little bit of a stain to it, 20 pound fluorocarbon. That's probably going to be my go-to. Next scenario up, maybe it's got a little more stain to it, a little little dirtier, or the cover is a little little bit heavier. I may go to 25 or 30 pound fluorocarbon, or may even go to a 25, 30 pound class type braid in that type of situation. The next scenario up, I'm going all out with the biggest gear and guns that I can get out of the, out of my sun line. I'm going to get up in that 60 pound plus braided line, and I'm going to go with a big heavy weight trying to get that reaction strike. And that's going to be in those situations where I'm dropping it into hydrilla, coontail, uh, deep timber, or I'm dealing with you know really off-colored water where I think I can get away with it. No matter which way you go, no matter what your choices are, spend some time experimenting. If the bite turns off one way or the other, maybe they're, they're a little line sensitive or a little line shy. You're not getting the action you're looking at, so downsize. If you're losing some fish and can't winch them out of that big cover, gun it up a little bit. Go big and don't give up. Keep flipping and pitching in there, set the hook hard, and winch those big guys out. Now that fish was definitely in that thicker patch. Look how dark he is on his back. Pretty fish though. When we come back, we've got more tips on catching fish when flipping and pitching. And later in the show, the action continues as Wade shares insight on crankbait fishing and how you can use these baits to catch more fish. A lifetime. It's spent learning, enduring, and growing. Day after day, season after season. As an outdoorsman, your pursuit is tireless. And at Cabela's, ours is too. We design, refine, and deliver durable, purpose-built products that you can trust your season with. If our name's on it, it's priced right every day. And built for seasons to come. Here at Big Bite Base, we've got a big line of different plastics, and you know they're all a tool, so you want to have them with you all the time. I made several checks in crowded areas, flipping that right there. Just a six-inch Big Bite Crete tail worm. Here at Big Bite, we came out with four brand new colors this year. All four of these colors are going to be great fish catching baits. Definitely my number one go-to bait that Big Bite has out right now is the Big Bite Battle Bug. Big Bite is leading the way when it comes to innovation and colors. The Fisherman's Handbook is brought to you in part by Bass Pro Shops. Your adventure starts here. Garmin, fight your fish, not your fish finder. And by Yamaha Marine, reliability starts here. I wish I could say there was just one thing that you needed to go grab or buy that would make you a better flipper pitcher. Number one, spend time on the water. Number two, try to get equipment that is designed for that. Uh, that could be your rod, you know, type scenario. I've got the Cabela's XML rod series here that is designed for flipping. Uh, it's a great all around flipping rod. Um, you know, it's going to allow you good sensitivity, feel, uh, all the way down to the quality of the blank where you're going to find success and be able to catch fish in a lot of different situations. But I'll, I'll be the first to tell you, there are times where I need a heavier action rod even than what this one is. For instance, if I'm, I'm dropping one ounce and a half, two ounce jigs in heavy hydrilla, uh, basically I want something with more backbone than this rod's even going to give me because that bite is such a reaction bite and I've got to winch them out of that grass. Not to say I can't do it with this rod because I can't. But a lot of times in that type of situation there, I need a very specialized rod. Same situation applies to choosing the bait uh, and the hooks and the style while you're, while you're trying to figure that out. Uh, what might work in flipping in that one to three foot of water like um, Clark Winlet and I did on Lake Somerville a couple years back. The fish were up in the shallow cover, lots of like little beanie bushes, little lightweight bushes that had just recently got flooded. Uh, we didn't need the heaviest gear in that type of situation. A fluorocarbon line, like a 20 pound sun line, uh, a quarter ounce or maybe a little heavier weight with just a nice soft plastic packaged up together, flipping in that cover, produced all the bites that we needed. A little better bass there. Golly. Get up her. Huh. Look at the belly on that guy. <laughs> when you get on a good flipping bite, that's just so hard to not enjoy, isn't it? I love it because it's like, you know, it's hands-on combat. It's kind of what I, the way I see it is. You know, you've got to make good pitches and a lot of them. It's not 
one cast every once in a while. It's ag actively making a good presentation to get a bite. Another situation to look at is a very similar scenario, except in totally different conditions. High, high winds, winds blowing 25 miles an hour. I found myself up on Lake Fairfield struggling to get a lot of bites. Knew the fish should be shallow, knew they were up there getting ready to spawn or already spawning. And what I finally had to do was take a, a compact scenario but use a big, big weight. Number one, so that I could make a presentation with the high winds, a light weight. I couldn't feel it falling. My bait was getting hung up in the top of the vegetation before it even get into the strike zone. So I upsized. I went to that one ounce weight or three quarter ounce weight, took a, a bait like a Yo Mama from Big Bite Baits that has a great kicking action and put a, a skirt on there, punchy skirt, flipped it in there all as one compact unit. If I didn't get a bite right away on the first, uh, the first drop, I'd kind of hop it and swim it back out of there and begin to tear the fish up by using that technique. So that's going totally the opposite way, but using very similar equipment. Got him swimming that one up there. That's two bites now I've had swimming. I need to put a swim jig on. Work it out of this cover. You know, I've got my trailer on this is that swim and crawl, and it's got great action like what we're doing right here when it's coming through there, putting off a lot of vibration. And we're at the back end of a pocket now when that one there bit. So. I caught him, I mean, I flipped in, hopped it twice, and then swam it out, and about the second rod pump, while I was swimming it, I saw the line jump, watched the swirl, and set the hook. All right, you can see the, the bulk, or the width, I should say even better, of those crawl, claws right there, and when they're coming through the water, they're turning and twisting and constantly putting off a lot of vibration. And, you know, it looks like a bait fish or a crawfish trying to get away. And, that's what we're trying to mimic while we're up in here. Coming up next on the Fisherman's Handbook, crankbaits can be one of the most effective ways to catch a large number of fish. Stay tuned as Wade shares his thoughts on crankbait fishing. For 50 years, Ranger has led the way in innovative, high-performance designs, and we're raising the bar again with a bold new flagship line, the Ranger Z Comanche L Series. These rigs are custom crafted with a passion for perfection and loaded with more features and advantages to deliver domination at every level. The next generation Ranger L Series celebrate a legacy, 50 years in the making. The key to a great boating experience has the Yamaha name on it. It's your key to legendary reliability. Right now, during the Yamaha Key to Reliability sales event, purchase any qualifying Yamaha outboard and exercise your power of choice between five years of Yamaha warranty protection or up to $1,500 in Yamaha dealer credit. The key to reliability is now your key to a great deal on a Yamaha outboard. Yamaha. Reliability starts here. The Fisherman's Handbook is brought to you in part by Cabela's, it's in your nature. Ranger Boats, still building legends one at a time. Ingle Coolers, a legend in reliability. And by Big Bite Baits, designed to bring the big bite to your line. Yeah, I'd love to know how many different crane baits there are in the world. I mean, it would be an astronomical number. And the reason there's so many of them is crankbaits catch fish 12 months out of the year every day in a certain situation. And as a fisherman, you've got to obviously determine what that situation is and how to catch them and, and the, the color, the action, the depth as well as the gear used to fish the crankbait. You know, it's not just something that you tie on and go out and catch fish after fish. Yes, you can probably tie any crankbait on that exists and it, you're eventually gonna get a bite on any given day, but there's times when you can pick the right crankbait, the right color, the right retrieve, and mix it all up with the right gear and find great success. Oh, yeah! <laughs> Look at that one right there, boys and girls. When you start really dissecting crankbait fishing, as far as what a guy likes in, a, in a choosing a fishing rod, that a lot of times becomes a personal preference a lot of times. I look back to those fiberglass crankbait rods that had a lot of give to them. I mean, when you hooked up a fish, you know, they'd be about that big around at the base. And I mean, it would, it would bend from about a foot and a half up the rod 
uh, all the way down. But that was very forgiving. Um, and that allowed a lot of guys to be able to fight those fish. What it didn't allow you to do a lot of times was have control over that fish. The fish, more often than not, was in control of the fight. And when you look at a lot of uh, people's choices now, they want a rod that probably has, you know, and you can start to see it in this rod here, where it flexes and where it gives it. It's more in the middle of the rod right in here. And, and it's as designed as a crankbait rod on the Cabela's XML series, where I look back at some of those flexible uh, fiber, old school fiberglass rods, they would flex all the way down to right in here and you would kind of lose control uh, a lot of times. Now, good and bad in that situation, hang a big fish going on runs at the boat or, or maybe didn't necessarily uh, get the bait as good as uh, you'd hoped he would. So some of that forgiveness was great, uh, but you lose control control a lot of times when that fish is making tremendous runs and, and you want to get him and steer him away from cover. So there's a trade off there. But at the end of the day, my best piece of advice when choosing a crankbait rod is find one that's designed specifically for crankbait fishing. It, it's got some of the attributes there uh, that you're looking for and find one with a good moderate uh, taper in it. Not not too forgiving, but not so forgiving you're out of control a lot of times. And that'll be a great rod for the average guys uh, crankbait needs that four to 10, 12 foot depth where he'll be able to fish effectively, have control of his baits, be able to fill the baits, be able to feel what they're doing as well as manage the fish. Got him that time. He crushed it too. Uh, he's gonna be hooked outside the mouth. You can see the fight. You can watch that rod as it goes down. And yeah, it's just so important when it comes to He's only got, now he's got two hooks in him. He only had one, now he's back to one. I, you know, that helps provide, it's a shock absorber, basically, when you're fighting fish. Oh, you got one hook, buddy. Gotcha, 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 gotcha. All right, we'll let him go back. You know, we talk about rods and the selection there. That, you can see it in evidence in that fight right there. Every time that fish would kind of go, he'd dig, he'd dig, and he'd pull, and you could see that taper, see that bend in there, and it, you know, that's, that's what you want in a crankbait rod. It's time for a break, but when we return, we break down the different actions in crankbaits and how these actions can trigger a fish to bite, right here on the Fisherman's Handbook. Quiet, you sons of fishes. Now, what? I'm switching sonar. Why? Because th th now I can see fish swimming live in front of my boat. I, I, I even see fish attack my lure. Y'all sonar is just history. I'm out. I'm with him. When I talk about sunline, I think of one word, confidence. Sunline FX2 is what I use for all of my frogging and flipping. SX1 braid, which braid plays a little big part in, uh, in fishing line. Shooter, I'm going to use in those close quarter deals, like flipping and pitching. One of my favorite techniques in fishing the tournament trail is to fish offshore ledges. We have taken the, the questions out of the equation. Take my word for it. It works. It works, dude. The Fisherman's Handbook is brought to you in part by Sawyer Products, we keep you outdoors. Ingle Coolers, a legend in reliability. And by Spro, sports professionals. There's one right there. God, you can see him on the grass down there coming up. He's getting ready to jump. He's gonna jump. <laughs> you can watch him actually go up and jump. Now he's going back down under the boat. He choked on that rock crawl. Look at that. Look where he's got that bait in his mouth. Yeah, I can That's a good one. That's a good one. Wow. You know, crankbait fishing in its most common form is a reaction bite. You know, a lot of times, I, I look back when I was younger and had a three, you know, a little tear tackle box and, and everything. I'd just throw it out there and I'd just reel and I wasn't even throwing it at anything. And then as I got older, I began to realize that yes, it's a reaction 
uh, bite, but boy, it is a way to really pick apart specific color uh, cover, especially when you uh, understand all the different variances in baits that are out there and what each one of them is designed for. There he is. Right there at the boat, there is a drop off. I can see it on my sonar right there. I had my pan optics out there. It was kind of doubled up, just a little sand drop. As is evident from the fish catches so far in this show, crankbaits can be used to catch fish all across the nation. One more key to cracking the code of crankbait fishing is understanding what style of crankbait to use for each situation. You look at the, the rocks that we're fishing right now, I mean, I'm sitting in five and a half, six foot of water. They roll out and eventually drop off in 10 feet. And, and I want a bait that I can throw up on these rocks and parallel it, and it's gonna hit like six, seven feet and bounce into these rocks. Well, you know, when I was younger, I might have come up here with a, a bait that would go 20 feet and it would be hung all the time. Or I'd come up here with a square bill type bait that just zoom right across the top of these fish and never get where they were setting up to, uh, as an ambush point. So keep it in mind that yes, this is a great reaction bite. And yeah, you can tie it on and as a kid or an adult, just go wind it. You will eventually catch one. But picking the right crankbait for the right situation is so key in getting these reaction strikes, whether it's this type of cover or any other cover. Oh, there's one right there, buddy. Oh, feels like a good one, too. But boy, they all feel good when they're first load up. He had jumped. Boy, he just tried to go the other way. Oh, get out of those rocks. Ah, not bad. Man, let's go this side with the fish. Get away from those rocks. He's got it all the way down in there. <laughs> Boy, he ate it. Stay right there, fish. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> he has a mouthful treble hooks right there. When you start talking about the actions of crankbaits, boy, there's a lot of them out there. And you've really got to kind of dial it in uh, based on the time of the year. A couple of things I like to keep in mind. When the water's very cold, I've always felt like a very tight wiggle is a, is a key, key, key action that a guy wants. And conversely, when the water temperature warms up, especially past the spawn, something with a big wide wobble. I always use the analogy when it comes to looking at crankbaits. Think about how cold it is outside when you walk out and how you're kind of bundled up. Everything's kind of tight. You're not as excited to be out there and you kind of are very tight in your walk. Now, think about the summertime. You're down on the beach and you're strutting and wiggling and walking around. Bait action's the same thing. Warm weather, big wobbling action baits are some of my favorites. When it gets cold, I like those narrower, tighter actions a lot of times. Ooh, he choked it. That's what you're looking for. That wraps up this episode of the Cabela's Fisherman's Handbook. This show featured a wide range of fishing tips intended to make you a better fisherman, as well as help you catch more fish on your next trip. To learn more tips like those featured in today's episode, and to stay up to date with everything we're doing, follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, or watch our videos on YouTube. Just search for the Fisherman's Handbook on any of those platforms. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you on the water again soon. At Sawyer, we use the best technology to make simple products that keep you going regardless of your journey. So whether you're boating, hiking, fishing, camping, or hunting, we keep you outdoors with a full lineup of products to both protect you and make the outdoors more enjoyable. Sawyer, we keep you outdoors. From the makers of Bubba Blade comes the Bubba Blade Fishing Pliers. No matter where you're headed to fish, this tool will become an integral part of your tackle box for many years to come. They feature our patented no-slip grip handles, just like our Bubba Blade knives, ensuring that this tool will stay firmly anchored in your hand. In addition to the handles, these pliers feature a super tough cobalt cutter and convenient split shot and leader sleeve crimping cutouts. The ultimate in control, strength, and durability. Bubba Blade. Ingalls got the original high performance cooler and a whole lot more.
Hangle coolers. Go with the original. Hobie's Mirage Drive kayaks set the standard for fun on the water. Whether your passion is fishing, sailing, or recreational adventure, Hobie's got a kayak for you. Hobie's Mirage Drive mimics nature's proven designs for efficient and powerful propulsion and enhances your kayaking experience. Mirage Power. Mirage Performance. Mirage Drive. Hobie. Enjoy the ride. Many said that we were just obsessed when we started, that there had to be an easier way to smoke food. As time passed, the Bradley family created a lineup of Bradley electric smokers that has made it easier for the novice or even expert chef to get perfect results every time they use it. Grab yourself a Bradley smoker and take your cooking to an all new level.